So good morning everyone. Welcome here at the Ecom Expo and thank you for having us today in our talk, the Marketing Gold Rush. If everyone please could set on this headsets so you can hear me. <laughs> It's a silent disco setting today, so if We're you want to hear me, you need to, to use the, the headset. headset. Otherwise, you're going to have to talk very loud. So can everyone hear me properly? Great, thank you. So let's start over again so you can all hear us. Uh, thank you for having us. Welcome at the Marketing Gold Rush how to capitalize on personalization uh, using structured data and PIMCOR. Before we kick in... Who am I? Tall guy. Uh, I've been in digital transformation marketing e-com for more than 20 years. And how that relates to me in personal life is that I like to build stuff, reconstruct stuff, improve stuff. And that's also what I do in professional life. And this would be me, cooking, uh, one of my favorite face times if I'm at home, finding the right ingredients to create great taste, and that quite resonates to my professional life. In my professional life, I am the CMO of UWE. Um, I'm in the forefront of digital marketing, marketing technology, and we try to help our clients finding the right mixture of the right technology and tooling to achieve goals. Owning the digital world, it's not only, not only a catchy line, it's a promise, a message we give. It's about being able to own your digital channels and assure they're going to work for your business. Welcome, we are here together as PIMCOR and UWE. First of all, PIMCOR is a data management platform and experience platform in one, which really simplifies the way you can personalize your messages online. And then it's UWE. And I work at UWE as CMO, and UWE helps customers implement PIMCOR, but more important, achieving their digital ambitions. Uh, we do that by engineering, but always engineering with a business mindset. So we look at marketing, we look at your company, see how you're structured, and see how we can deliver value to you. Our joint mission is that we can help you turn your data into seamless, personalized customer journeys. But it's important to understand there's a huge gap in what your customers expect from your brand and what most companies deliver. McKinsey did a recent research and found that 71% of your audience is open in receiving personalized messages, even if that means sharing data uh, of your person's profile, as long as it helps them. But a staggering 67% of this audience gets frustrated if you don't deliver, if you don't really help them out in their customer's journey, giving the wrong messaging to the wrong audience, not helping them in doing their customer's jobs. But before we dig into the technology and the marketing stuff, let's go back in time. Let's go back to Sutter's Mills in Cali California in the end 1900s when a spark of gold was found in the river and it sparked one of the biggest gold rushes in history. Over 300,000 people were sparked by the gold trying to find their bit of prosperity and moved over on a very difficult journey to California. But when they arrived it wasn't the promised land. They found chaos where the rule of law was replaced by the rule of the pickaxe needing to battle for their every right to claim their piece of land to find the gold. But with all gold rushes and all rushes in time, there comes a plateau. Not everyone will be able to find the gold and capitalize on it. In the end, it's about finding the gold, but more important, understanding its value understanding how you can capitalize. And in these ages, the Industrial Revolution came in and they took over the complete business. Machinery came in and the big mining corporations took over. 
But then again, looking at California today, it's still one of the most prosperous areas economically wise in the world. So the story we would like to tell you today is that you are all in the gold rush. You are all in the midst of the gold rush of capitalizing on your data. And open your social channels. You will see all the messages about generative AI and all new technologies that come in place. But in the end, you are the guy standing in the river looking for the gold. It's you that needs to be able to interpret your data and to see where can you find the value of your data and how can you use that to capitalize it for your business, achieving your business goals. Most firms today aren't able to capitalize on their personalized experiences. That's a bold statement. Do take notice that every technology out here today on the Ecom Expo, everything you see which has this nine nice shiny glitter and glamour which you can use, all the fundaments you need is your data. Organizing your data, structuring your data and making your data actionable for all these tools you would like to use. And that, my friends, will be a story we're going to tell you, tell you today. But before we do so, I'm interested. How many of you are planning of using generative AI for your business? Could you raise your hands? So quite a few of you. So let's do another small, small test. How many of, many of you have actually already have plans to invest in your data and data governance? I see a lot less fingers in the air. So making sure your data is ready to use and to use it in your experience needs a good platform and a good way of shaping it. And that will be something my colleague will tell you all about. All right, first of all, why would you adopt personalization? Uh, personalization is talked about a lot, but why would you go into it? Studies by Gartner show that actually 86% of people are more than happy to welcome personalized messages and personalized content if it is engaging for them and puts them at the right place in their journey. So 86%, that's quite a big percentage that would actually feel they would be helped by having personalized messages. But there's a, a contrary to that. Um, already 55% would steer away from a brand if they, their message is not involved, it's not engaged, it's not personalized and doesn't fit with the question or requirement that they have. So let's look at a real example of what personalization could be about and how we're going to construct that. Um, first of all, what do you see in this picture? I guess a room with some furniture, right? But each of you will think of this picture as something different. You either like it or you don't. And it matches with your expectations or it doesn't. Uh, if I'm looking for a nice dinner table, this is not the message. So underneath all of this, there is the catalog perspective of things. So this is a collection of products put into a room. So that's the perspective it's already in. Uh, there's data connected to each of those if you have the right data set up. So it's um, brand uh, information, category information, the type of room, style, color choices. These are all um, data attributes connected to each of those products that would create a personalized and engaging, uh, engaging magic. If we then look at not just the products, but we take the next step, we get into the customer insights, because in the end, I can have all the data around products and can have all the styling and, uh, and everything, but it's the customer, customer data, customer behavior, customer segmentation that defines whether the products that I show to them or the story I tell to them 
is an engaging fit. So we see here uh, information like uh, reviews, uh, style preferences is very personal. Uh, purchased items, brand preferences, that's all data that I can capture on a personal level. And if I then have the correct data on a product level, I can connect the two dots. So uh, the importance of the uh, message in this is that you need to use structured data to create messages that tell a story that people want to read. So if we look at a real, real life example of what that could look like, um, first of all, we have an ad and that ad is constructed of different pieces. Again, you see uh, the room with the products uh, I have some brands that people might relate to, so we construct an ad that is made of the data that we know from customer and also product perspective. So we create structured messages that have product data, category data, brand data, style data, all the data that is needed to construct this message that fits with the message that a customer would expect or would want or would help them or maybe even surpass what they think they need. Um, and of course, we connect that with the behavioral data from the user. Um, if a user interacts with our brand more than once, we start to understand what styles engage with them, what products they stick with, they look at the longest. And the preference they have in brands, in colors, in styles, etc. Now, if we capture all that data around the customer and we have the same insights on a product level, then we can connect the two dots and provide them with a personalized behavior. Um, the data from the user perspective is not only the behavioral data, is what they do on a website, in a store, uh, whatever you can connect, but it can also be based on segmentation. So age, gender, color, uh, places where they live. Uh, so there's a combination of data that you can use to already segment customers that you don't have any behavioral data about to understand what message would resonate with them. Then the next step, we had the ad. Clicking on the ad, what's going to happen? And we have an ex uh, example of a landing page that is again based on the same room we saw before, but is then enhanced with additional products within the same style. So from the engagement we have with the ad, we take the customer to the next level and provide them with additional choices and additional features they would probably not have expected. So we build a stronger connection and from the behavior, the interaction with the landing page, we start to understand the preferences of a customer much better. And that will improve over time. Um, then of course, this uh, leads to results. And from A-B testing with examples like that, we've seen that if we get the engagement with the customer on the right level with the right products, that we see an uplift in conversion uh, of 20 to 35 percent. So that's already nice conversion we all like, so that brings direct money. But also, because um, we engage with the customer, that's something that Google recognizes in their score on landing pages. So if a customer is engaged, they will stay on a page for a longer time, which will improve the quality score, will in turn then lead other people to have a higher ranking on the landing pages on the, the SERPs in Google. Uh, so it's important to mark up the content that you have, mark up the product data and become structured in the way you deal with data to be able to deliver these personalized messages and this personalized content. Without data, none of this exists. An important one, and now we're getting into the data side of things. Um, I've said the word structured data. 
uh, what we understand by structured data is data that can be understood by people but also by machines if I have a description on a product that says the product is blue no machine will understand what that means so it will not interpret it and will not be able to do anything with it but if I use structured data that says this attribute is called color and its value is blue and I can extend that to whatever attributes I want on a product level then it will also be understood by machines and it can lead to translating it to personalized messages it also helps you get top rankings with rich snippets so it's not just the attributes it's reviews it's images so everything related to a product in a structured way so that it can be understood and presented. We'll see some examples of that. Um, bridging the gap with AI. We just talked about who's thinking about deploying AI. Um, also AI, of course, it tries to understand uh, languages much better, but it's also helped a lot by having structured data. Structured data around your product, but also structured data around questions you might have on a product level. Uh, we'll see an example of that in a bit. Supporting voice search. If I ask Alexa, could you bring me a pepperoni pizza? Then it needs to understand the pizza is a pepperoni pizza and it's delivered from somewhere close to me. If I don't provide that data, then it will never be able to understand that it can deliver me that pizza. And that pizza could also be a blue chair that fits with my brown table. Um, it needs all that structured data to create the relations and understand what will engage with you and provide you with the right choices and the right options. So if we look at what that looks like in real life, you'll start to recognize that is something you see on a daily basis. And you might question yourself, do I have the data in place to be able to provide this content to, uh, to customers? Uh, on the first hand, uh, product attributes, in this case we're shopping for brown leather shoes, so we need to understand it's a shoe, it's brown, it's leather, um, so those are data aspects you need within your data to be able to get to results like this on Google. Of course the product reviews, they will show up if you put them there in the right structured way. Uh, images and a thing that has become more apparent recently, and I see people start using more and more, is the FAQs that are presented within the results. Google doesn't make up these uh, questions. Uh, if you structure your content in a way that is clear what the question and what the answer is and to what products that relates, it will be able to rank that in search results. In, in this case, what jeans go well with brown shoes. It needs that structured data to be able to construct this way of results. And finally, of course, uh, location data, uh, a very important aspect, understanding where a product can be delivered within what time frame and what's the availability in a nearby location. So this has been stated before, it's not about finding the gold, it's about understanding the value and knowing how to harness it to get to the right results. That is to say, we've just talked about what you can do, it might sound very easy, but in real life it's not really easy, it's something that has a lot of hurdles and a lot of people hold back on starting it with it because they're trying to reach the end result and don't see how to get there. Um, in real life, data is scattered over many places, uh, so it's hard to uh, treat that in a structured way. There's a lack of data, there's a lack of uh, data quality, a lack of ownership in data quality. Um, the data-driven mindset of organizations is not always there, so there's a lot of reasons why not to start with getting your data in order but in the end if you don't start you're not getting anywhere okay. so the thing is don't start with ai start with the stuff that you can handle you can understand and is within your reach so start with the basic data collection 
get the data from your suppliers make sure that you enrich that in a good way and make sure it complies with the structured data standards then start seg segmenting customers based on rules um, very low hanging fruit that's something that can easily be done and then slowly make your steps toward personalization uh, adding the behavioral data to customer profiles so that you can connect with the right product data etc So invest in the data infrastructure because you will need it. There's not going to be a point where people that don't have the data structured will survive. Uh, things change and it will only change based on having structured data. So quickly go through this one again. Step at the basic and go to advanced step by step and you will get there in the end without having the whole plan in reach. And we are here as PIMCOR, and what PIMCOR can provide is an easy step into getting the data structured, because it will provide you with the product information management, a master data management piece, uh, digital asset management, so if the data management is in the one platform. Customer data can be held within PIMCOR. Uh, there's a digital experience management part, so it's one platform that can help you get started in this personalization journey thank you Hank so let's wrap this up um, as Hank told data management is key to move forward in personalization and finding this really engaging encounters with your customers um, you can use AI not only to work on the front end to do decision making but also to complete your data to assure that your data quality is properly organized and at the right quality. And only then you can use building these great customer journeys and of course find the gold. Hopefully you have a lot of questions left. So we really would like to engage with you all. We have a stand nearby a few steps away if you move that direction. It's a stand like shown on the picture where we really would like to engage. We really have a few minutes left, so there is a little room for a few questions, and then I think we need to make place for the next speaker in this arena. Um, so if there's any question you would like to ask here today, then please raise your hand and then the microphone will follow. I get the other room. <laughs> I get the wrong uh, here, here. Oh, uh, I have the right one, so just go ahead. Hi. So um, if there's any question. So I have a question. Please stick up your hand. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Hi, I have a question. So I'm working for a multinational company and we're working with different regional uh, countries and everything. So do you guys support multiple language for now or is it just based on English data at the moment? No, it's actually localized data, so not only language, but also region. So you could have uh, French, 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 Swiss, uh, all those uh, variations. Uh, but you can also connect uh, regions irrelevant of language. Uh, so there's a combination of attributes that you can connect to that personalization. Any other questions? Hello. Uh, regarding structured data, how does PIMCOR work with that? Does it inject the structured data directly on the website, or is it a different kind of service? It's a two-step approach. Uh, first of all, you would structure the data in the product information or master data management uh, part. So really make sure you understand what attributes and what values you have. And then that gets translated on the website to proper structured markup according to schema.org but that's based on the structured data that's already in PIM so it's a relatively easy thing to do on the front end. And you can still choose whether or not to build your experience on top of PIMCore or shape it in one of other preferred platforms you have available. One in the back. Ah.
A quick question based on what you've explained with the structured data, do you give recommendations or do you advise how to use the structured data or do you do both? In terms of we definitely do that. It's uh, first of all based on, on schema.org, which is a standard that defines what product data could look like. And there's different types of products that have different types of data. But you can expand on that and define whatever attribute is, uh, uh, is something that is of value to the product data. So you can expand on the normal standards and it will still be understood in the right way. So that is something that we would fit to the type of product, type of customer, type of business you would have. And that's not only restricted to product data, that goes for any kind of data you would like to manage. Um, so uh, assure that you profile it in the right way so you can use it on any channel in an easy way. Then I'm more than happy to thank you all for your attention today. If you have any questions left, visit us at the booth and we have some more time to engage with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.